Welcome to the Build on Beauty Podcast, where beauty is born skin deep. Now, here's your host, author, speaker, entrepreneur, Cornell Germain. guest with us. He is a multi-Grammy award winning singer, songwriter, producer, and vocal arranger who has worked with the likes of Destiny's Child, Tony Braxton, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, need we say any more. <laughs> Please help me welcome the one and only LaShawn Daniels, better known as Big Shiz. What's happening? How you doing? Oh, we, uh, Pastor Deacon, Brother Cornell, I'm feeling real good today. I'm feeling real good being up here with you and your and your peoples. It's a pleasure to be here, sir, and honor. I appreciate you coming, man. You have your body of work is extensive, and you and you only thirty. Well, you can't be no more than thirty. <laughs> well, listen, we're gonna stay with it just like that. We're gonna stay with it just like that. Cornell said, "I'm thirty. That's what it is." That is what it is. <laughs> oh man, but but I mean, you got such a beautiful body of work, and um, how, tell us about it. You started as a singer songwriter, or did you start as a vocal arranger producer? Well, it, it, it started as a vocal arranger and producer. I, listen, I'm, I'm born and raised in the church, and I have so much respect for a, a, a bunch of talented crazy, just stupid singers, so I never really considered myself a singer. So what I would do is, you know, when I had to write these songs, I would write these songs and I would go in and I would demo them, you know what I mean? So I, I would definitely say I, I started from the, uh, the writing, producing aspect, you know, to consider myself a singer to me is a, you know, is a stretch when you got people out there like uh, uh, Marvin Winans and, and Beyonce and, and Tank and it's just crazy. I, you know, I just got to get a, a certain message across. Man, you just said one of one of my favorites, Marvin Winans. They just um, ooh, not long ago, ooh. man. They just celebrated um, his 60th birthday, and you, they had a big old concert. When I tell you, and I, I was I, I wasn't even able to attend, but I just saw some of the clips. When I tell right. you the the people that showed up and the talent, I just said, oh my gosh. Like, everybody that took the mic just, just slayed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just saying, like, who wouldn't? Like, you got to figure. Marvin, his, his, his songwriting and his inspiration to us all has been, you know, spanning for years. And I honestly don't think that there's a reputable singer or a songwriter whose lives or gift he has not touched. You know what I yep, mean? He, he is the, the illest, period. That, that is so true. What, what – um. What prompted you uh, to to get into the business? What, like, if you if you weren't in this side of the business, what would you what would you be even doing with your life? <laughs> if I wasn't like, in music, was, if, yeah. Listen, if I wasn't in music, um, I would probably be a notorious pimp from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> So music, no, 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 music no, no, saved no. your life then. 
<laughs> music saved my life and society. I, I asked this question one time before, and I definitely have a passion for cars. So I, I don't know if I would be selling cars, but I would be doing something in the aftermarket type of thing with cars. But absolutely, music is my passion, and I, and I, I thank God for it because, crazily enough, it's, it, I always say these crazy answers because I honestly – I can't see me, you know, doing anything else outside of music. Man, I, you're you're amazing at it. When 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 did you get your your big break? Do you remember who gave you a big break? Wow. Um, well, we I started off with uh, well, my first start was with my partner and my brother uh, Joe Thomas. So uh, Joe and I we grew up in the same church association. So. Uh, when, Jer- when, when, when Joe moved from uh, Opelikum, I, was, I always try to remember that name, Opelikum, Georgia, to New Jersey, um, he had gotten dis- discovered, and he had gotten, he had struck a record deal, and from that point on, we was just working together and writing songs. Now, both of us was getting robbed, but, you know, we loved music so much, we didn't even know. Uh, I won't say we didn't care, but we didn't even know. Um, so I would have to say, Joe... Joe is definitely the one that gave me, you know, my first start. Of course, shortly after that, meeting my, my longtime partner uh, in music, Rodney Jerkins, um, in Dark Child Entertainment. Uh, we were Dark Child for some 15, 20 years, um, and still are, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I would have to say Joe gave me my real, real first foot in the door because if, I, if it wasn't for Joe, I would have never met Rodney, and I would have never met all the other great people who actually ever cut me a check. <laughs> Wow. You, you you work with so many talented artists, but one of them, I mean, I can't help but ask about, is Michael Jackson. Like, what was that wow. had to be, like, amazing? What was that experience like? Let me explain something to you. Michael Jackson changed my life to this day. He changed our, all of our lives, you know, as far as Dark Child and how we were working. He put forth such a different way of thinking when it came to music that we had to absolutely sit outside of the way we did. I mean, it's like, you know, before him, of course, we had gotten to him by, you know, some of the earlier records we produced, which, you know, were successful and all that type of stuff. But, I mean, it's like we were starting from square one when we got in with Michael just because of his language of creativity and how he would create and the the, the tactics he would take to go to creation. Oh, my God, it absolutely blew our mind. So today... When I create today, I use some of the same tactics that Michael taught us. I mean, it was just his way of thinking was just phenomenal. And it was no wonder why he had the effect that he did have on this industry because, you know, he eat, breathed, lived it, slept it every day, all day, and he was very, very, very in tune with everything around him and everything that he was trying to do. So Michael, Michael absolutely shaped my mature uh, creativity and my mature business side when we met him. It, it, I mean, unthinkable. I, I, I couldn't imagine not having that influence in my life. So, so I got to go here. And <laughs> when you hear people like uh, Quincy Jones say the things he said about Michael, what goes through your mind? Well, l- listen, at that time, you know, Quincy, of course, is one of the greatest. You know what I mean? One of the greatest people to ever do it. And, of course, there are, you know, incidents and studio situations to where I'm sure they experience, you know. I also know, and this is no disrespect, I hope I don't get slayed for this, Quincy is getting a little older. <laughs> yeah, right. Quincy Somebody needs to take him and get older. checked out. <laughs> Quincy getting a little older. I'm not sure that the accounts are expanding um, as, uh, verbatim as he's quoting them, but you know I'm I, 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 I'm not sure that that's the mic that I knew, you know what I mean. So uh, of course you know to take nothing away from Quincy Jones, a legend, a, a historic legend. We will never see another one. But Quincy is getting a little older. So Craig, when 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 I get a little older, I'm not sure you want to keep in, interviewing me. I might be right. We got. Weird- <laughs> <laughs> we go, we gonna just make sure you fed and medicated, and <laughs> so you don't cause no trouble. Exactly. <laughs> make sure they ain't beat me up in the in the nursing home. This, this, That's right. Sure slip me a quarter pounder under my door, and I'm all right. 
<laughs> well, you've also you, you, you've written with um, well for Destiny's Child two of their biggest hits, "Say My Name" and "Lose My Breath." What, what was yeah. it like writing those songs for them? Oh, let me tell you something. Say My Name was a uh, a lot of the earlier songs I wrote was a, a true and real depiction of my life. So they were all real life scenarios that I had been through. Um, and Say My Name was definitely uh, a none different. When we when we sat to do that session, um, actually Rodney had called me uh, on my way. We did the session in California. At the time, we lived in New Jersey. So he called me. He's like, yo, you got to think of something crazy. You know, this is how we got to do it. And, you know, we just start talking about stuff. Once we got into the studio with the girls, you know, we just started trying to come up with concepts and things that girls really do. And at the time, you know, I was going in a crazy, crazy relationship, and I would go through the things like, uh, you know, where you at? And I'd be like, I'm at the studio. Well, make sure ain't no girls around you. I hear some girls in the background. If ain't no girls in the background, say you love me. Say my name. I would go through that all the time. So in that scenario, I just related it to the girls, and they was like, oh, my God, it's so true. And we ended up writing that record. Now, losing my breath, you know, people say what they will, you know, about Beyonce. I'm sure you've heard a lot of rumors about how she doesn't write and how she doesn't do this, that, and the third. But I absolutely can say on Lose My Breath, when that track came across, when, when, when the whole record came together as far as the track and the music of it, like she just kept kept saying, lose my breath. That's what, because the tempo was so upbeat, and she felt like when you're in the club and you're getting to it and you're really dancing, that was the thing that had to be related. So I, I was just grateful to be a part of that record. Now, you, all, you, you said something about the Say My Name. I have to just say, I, why do you think women do that? Because I've experienced it. I know every guy's experienced it. Like, I'm talking <laughs> to you on the I'm I'm on the phone with you. Right. Right. So what do it right. matter if I if I say I love you or not? Like I answered the phone. Like I think <laughs> I think most guys would be like if they was cheating, they ain't gonna answer. You know? <laughs> they, def- they definitely ain't gonna answer the phone. And that's just the thing, you know. Women, you know. The, now let me get biblical on you. Now the Bible teaches that the women have a conflicting nature. They have the uh, 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 want to be rude. They and be rude at the same time. So they want to rule and be rude at the same time. So it's a conflicting nature in them. They just want to know and and see if they have enough influence in your life for you to do and say something outlandish at the times that they ask. You know, sometimes I comply, other times I don't. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep both sides. Right. So you still deal with that with April after all these years? No, no, no. Let me tell you, April is totally different. April is like, listen, I don't care. Who you around? You need to be back here at a certain time. Her thing is, her thing is totally different. She lets me do, you know, what I need to do. But when it's her time, she does not compromise on her time. That's I don't blame her. So, how do you approach uh, writing for an artist? If you had an artist, if they brought an artist to you, brand new, nobody you heard of or, or seen before, how would you approach writing for them? Well, the only, only way to be successful in doing that, I feel like now and we're in the information age, the only way to be successful and, 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 and get a song that will relate and, and resonate to people is you got to talk to that artist. Like nowadays people know and feel when something is contrived. They know and feel when something is put together prefab. They got to feel some type of heart strain. They got to feel some type of connection with this artist. So my way of uh, my rule of thumb now is whenever somebody's bringing anybody to me, whether new, young, old, whatever, it doesn't matter, I have to know their real perspective. I have to know what they want to convey. I need to know why they want to convey it. And then we need to come up with the best game plan, whether we go through real-life scenarios or we compile a bunch of scenarios that they've been through or we come up with a situation and see how they deal with it. There has to be transparency. There has to be a realness to it because nowadays it just won't work if people don't feel the artist. So, so taking in consideration the charts and what's hot in, in, the, in the streets is not necessarily your, your, your uh, approach. You don't even think about that. Oh, no, absolutely, see, because there's a difference in Sonic. Now, what, what, what's popping in streets and what's popping in stars, what's resonating with radio and all that type of stuff, there's a sonic that you still 
you know, kind of have to implement a bit. I'm not saying mimic or shape, but you give the sonics as far as the things around the message, what it needs to compete in a today's time, but that message and whatever that artist is saying has to resonate clear. People have to feel like, oh, yeah, I, I like him or her, and, and, and I rock with him. I believe that from him or her. If they feel it like, oh, no, nah, the track is dope, but they don't live that life, then you lost them right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you are transitioning from behind the scenes to on the stage. You have a wow. – uh, a project coming out. First of all, I got to see how, how did you even approach this? Like, did you always want to be an artist or is this something that just came to you? Well, it's, it's crazy because I was sitting one night and I was having a crazy conversation with one of my good friends, PJ Morton. And, you know, we was just talking about music and the thread of it and the heartbeat of it. And, you know, we got down into these songs discussing his project and, he turned to me and said, Shiz, like, it's, my nickname is Shiz, everybody know that. He's like, Shiz, it's, it's certain things only you can convey. It's a message that only you can get out there. So when, 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 when people, I, I, want all, I want at all times people to know my heart for Christ. I want all times for people to know that I want the best for everybody in the world. Now, that might be kind of far-fetched, but it's the truth. So in that, this project came about from just me wanting everybody to hear my perspective. This message was a message from me. You know what I mean? It just happens to be in a certain arena because I am a church boy. You know what I mean? My health and my strength and everything that I've ever been through does come from the Lord. So I feel like this message had to come from me. It's not that I always wanted to be an artist or always wanted, but this particular message in the times that we're living in, you know, some crazy, crazy things that's happening around in the world from from presidential leadership on down. I feel like love has to be the message that we're conveying, and I feel like this one had to come from me specifically. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, when I got the briefing, and it, they, they told me it was uh, inspirational. They said inspirational. They didn't say Christian. But then I listened to the right. lyrics. I was like, oh, this is this got the word all up and through it. And then, <laughs> But the beat alone... <laughs> I got to tell you, the beat alone, I was like, hey, I, I, this is right, something that's going to be rocking. The summer summer going to be jumping with this track. Again, that's, love. Uh, I saw I the video. As, yeah, I saw the video as well, which I, I got to ask you, what location was that when you guys were in that open field? I mean, it was just beautiful. <laughs> shout, to, shout to Toro, the uh, uh, video director. Um, he He comes up with these crazy, crazy, places to try and match the tempo and the meaning of the song. Again, he saw the song as a complete conversation with God and nothing else around you. So with nothing else around you, we got to be smack dab in the middle of a desert. And I don't know how he found this location, but it was probably about uh, two hours outside of L.A., and we woke up one morning, drove out there, and, and got it done. It's, it's it's great. It, it is great. Now, what what develop what uh, inspired the sound for this particular song? Because it's definitely got that new sound. Like you talk about the sonic. What inspired the right. sound for that? Again, you. I think you hit the nail on the head. I'm just listening to radio and listening to a sound that would you know kind of register on both sides. We felt like this sound was 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 dope enough. To, to register with mainstream and at the same time be easily digestible from, you know, to them super-duper saints, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all about a groove. It's all about a pocket. You know, the millennial side of, of just hope and all things love right now, they got to have something they can rock to. You know what I mean? I can't, go, I can't come to them with the slow bop and the a, and a old church organ. You know, they may not hear the organ. They, it might not resonate with them that well. So this sound was, I think we sat in the middle of it, and we just kind of said, okay, this is a nice little vibe right here. This is a nice little groove. Shout to my man uh, uh, at Jesse Franco's and, 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 and my man uh, uh, G Music. For, for getting this thing done for me, but you know we just we just kind of put it together. Wow, well, is this? I got. I'm just curious for my own 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 self. Is this independent or are you on a label? Oh yeah, it's it's, it's absolutely independent. Um, you know we we we're in the evolving, transitioning music industry daily. So uh, 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 right now it's definitely independent. I don't have any intentions on going inside, not unless the Lord says differently. 
you know what I mean? But right now, this this is this is going to be a labor of love or work for me. Like, I, I need everybody to feel it from me, so it has to be me all the way around. Hmm. Now, speak to that real quickly. In your From your vantage point, because you've, you've been behind the scenes with numerous artists, what are the pros and cons of going independent versus signed? Well, right now, I think a lot of the companies are still navigating through these new uh, terrains. Um, now, with, 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 you know, uh, different platforms, DSPs like Spotify, Apple Music, shout to Spotify. They've been absolutely wonderful and, and, and walking hand in hand with me in this project. But it's just a new way of doing business. So you kind of catch yourself in between the artists that are signed to major labels and competing with the DSPs and getting their music and message out faster and it being tracked the way it's supposed to so they can get paid and all that type of stuff as opposed to those who take the independent route and they utilize all the DSP sites and build relationships with them. In my opinion, uh, both sides will come together soon just because it has to. I, don't, I think the old way of doing music to where you're signed to a label and the label is doing the work and they put in, I feel like every artist, signed or unsigned, has to be proactive. And in being proactive, you know, to some, they will say that merits a full independent swing. And, you know, at, at the other times when you partner up with a label, as long as they can respect your persistence and your grind and your proactiveness and can match it, I feel like it can be a good partnership. Hmm. That's good. That's good wisdom. Now, I got I to gotta touch into more of your career because you have such a big body of work. Um, Absolutely. I understand. I understand you went on tour with the 20-year Bad Boy reunion. What was, what was your role on the tour? That's, that was absolutely crazy because I actually did half the tour. So Puff gave me a call and was like, yo, Playboy. <laughs> that's how he talked to you. That's how he talked to you. That's how he do it. You know, Puff is just cool at whatever he does. So, you know, he basically wanted some uh, inflections in new arrangements on these classic songs, but not so new to where it takes you away from that nostalgia of the first time you heard the records he was touring with. So what my role was, we kind of went in with every artist that was on the tour, and we kind of shaped new performance backgrounds, you know, that would add to the original backgrounds that were there for the original records, but just giving it, you know, a, a new... Uh, 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 new new outfit, kind of, you know what I mean? Adding little notes, adding little nuances, little new things that just make it when they're on stage, you feel these songs even greater. And you might say, hey, I never heard that part before, or and still can sing along with your most memorable favorite part of that record. So I just kind of came in as arranging and putting together the, the, the show backgrounds and the show arrangements of the entire tour. Okay, okay. Now, that alone is an important job. You know, it may seem like so, to some that it's insignificant, but that's that's important because you, you're controlling how this music is conveyed pretty much or the sound or what people are receiving, would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's important that people don't miss those feelings. Like uh, I can recall on the Carl, Th Carl Thomas song on the um, Wish I Never Met Her, like in certain parts, Wish I Never Met Like people remember those parts. And they want to sing along with them. So you don't want to compromise those moments, but you absolutely want to add to the experience. Who, who were now during Bad Boys days when they were just raining, uh, who was your artist that you just loved to hear? Because I know everybody got their Bad Boy group that they just loved. <laughs> I loved Carl Thomas, Faith right. Evans, and, right. and Craig Mack, which I'm like, where was Craig at? <laughs> I used to love Craig. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And guess what? You ain't the only one. Uh, you know, you wasn't the only one. Everybody loved Craig. But I got to say, my, I mean, you know, my bad boy number numero uno was Biggie. I mean, I, I really oh, think yeah. he changed my life. He absolutely changed my life. Where, you know, even now you go back, God knows how many, what is it, over 20 years now, but you go back and listen to some of his lyrics and, and some of his cadence and some of his – perspectives and point of views and and you have no choice to think to yourself like wow what would it be right now like what i know it would be absolutely crazy because big was ahead of his time just in how he performed just in the the, the hooks he chose to use i mean he was just incredible he influenced me a great deal yeah now 
I, I you I see and I couldn't help but to notice and I got I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to ask you about it. <laughs> you almost lost your religion for a minute while you was on tour. I saw you got on on social. You had to check a few people. What happened? <laughs> No, it wasn't nothing like that. As people know, um, you know, uh, my wife and I were a part of a show, Vince and Tamar, and what happened at that time is, you know, Tamar at the time had, you know, these diehard crazy fans, and I guess she had went on social media to announce, I guess, uh, something she was going through that day, and, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the pros and cons of sharing things with social media. People are left to take them you know, the way they went to. And what happened was, you know, her fans or whatever it was somehow drew a line from what she was saying to uh, my wife and I. And, you know, at, at, you know, at a certain point, you know, enough is enough. So you just got to kind of get up and, you know, state your cause. Like, listen, man, I love everybody. I have no idea what y'all are talking about, but stay off my timeline with this, not unless y'all want some real problems. <laughs> right. Yeah, because people, people take – Jesus name. They t- Right, I know. They take it too far. They take this social right. media way too far. I mean, people don't understand. And I think that's the danger of it. And I was just talking to somebody not too long ago, and I said, this thing is going to implode one day because I, I just – it can't continue like this. You know what I'm saying? Because people right. don't know the boundaries. Then you have a group of people who are just socially awkward now because they have just been ingrained into this scrolling and right. social media. So right. you – you right. sitting in a room full of people and you can't even you, you can't even talk because you just it's, right. it's so odd to me. I'm like this is it's gonna break at some point. It's just odd. Right. I can't get it. I, I absolutely mm-hmm. think it needs to be some regulation to it. But then again, you know, uh, uh, if you got a friend, it starts with us. If you got a friend that's going crazy on social media, pull him back, pull her back, let her know, yo, you got to chill. Like this is ridiculous. And you know, those parents that you know have the children that are growing up in this social media age, it's important that, you know, you still take time and point things out to your children. Like I have a 12-year-old, and he doesn't have his phone through the week. That just is what it is. He may get his phone on Friday, you know what I mean? And when he gets his phone on Friday after everything is done, school and all that type of stuff, you know, he, he, we give him a little bit of leeway. But there has to be some type of regulation, whether it comes from in-home or whether it comes from these platforms themselves, because it definitely is getting out of control. Hmm. In light of social media, you posted a few weeks ago, or not too long ago, about a young lady who we all love, uh, a song you wrote for Whitney Houston. What was it like working with the late, great Whitney Houston? This is the best time of my life. (laughs) Whitney, (laughs) oh, my God, that whole experience. I've never met someone so iconic and so just real. You know, we're both from Jersey. So I guess that kind of resonated with us differently. I, I, I just never met somebody that down to earth, that professional in what she does, and that just cool. Like, like the life lessons and the life gems she was dropping, we started in the studio, then we ended up at her home, you know what I mean? And, and of course, she had the studio in her house, but it, it started off business, hey, we're going to meet in the studio and start, blah, 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 blah. But we ended up at her house. That, I think that speaks volume as to the progression in that amount of time that, you know, we, we, we respected each other. And, and God knows we were at awe. But let me tell you something. The things that she imparted in us just from a life perspective and in a music business perspective, like don't ever be too crazy to where you can't reach out and, and – Embrace the next young. I mean, we learned so much from her. I say today that those Whitney months were some of the best months of my life. We laughed, we cried, we ate. You know, it was. We argued, we did. It was amazing. It was just some of the best realest times of my life. Mm. Who 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 do you admire as a songwriter? Who do you look up to? Oh wow, wow! It's so many, so many. Wow, I don't even know if I can answer that. It's, uh, 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 songwriting to me is a skill. Um, I, I, and I span across, well, of course, I have a lot of colleagues that I love, um, Makiba Riddick Woods, um, J.Q. Smith, um, Eric Bellinger. Um, but then you reach across and, 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 and you have the Drakes. I think Drake is a genius songwriter. Uh, um, and then I go to country, Leanne Womack, some of the best songs I've ever heard. 
I, I, I can go on. Like, it's, it's too much John Mayer. Oh, my God, John Mayer. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's too, I mean, it's too much. I, I, I'm, I'm the type of person, and I feel like I learned this from Michael. Michael felt like you should be able to take the best from everyone you come across. And all of these great songwriters, I absolutely take their best in the piece of what I do every day. Hmm. What would you What would you say makes a great song as a songwriter? I would say uh, what makes an incredible great song is, again, like I touched on earlier, it has to resonate in whatever emotion, whatever concept you are thinking of. You have to execute that concept in the shape or form of whatever topic you're dealing with. Everybody has to relate. Everybody can pinpoint uh, one line that you're saying, and it, and, it, and, it, and it owns them, and they own it. I feel like just being a realist in the middle of all of it, I think that's what makes a great song. Nothing beats. Nothing beats someone being out and they're hearing a song, and they just have to stop what they're doing for a second, like, oh, wait a minute, this is my joint. It resonates them. It pierces them. I think that's what makes a crazy song. Is there a song that you've worked on that surprised you? Like maybe you was like, I don't know, but it gets out there and it becomes this huge hit? Well, it's, listen, that's my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> you say you surprised on the regular. <laughs> and on the regular. That's my, that's my whole career. Of course, you know, us loving what we do, I had no idea that, you know, some of the songs that, you know, I've done in doing them, Will would translate the way they did. Would would absolutely affect the way they did. It's 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 a surprise and a shock to me every time someone says, it, especially with this again love and doing this. Like it's it's a it's a surprise. People uh, are repost and DM me and all of this type of stuff, and I'm just seeing their response to it. It's just it's just a surprise all the way around. Like I'm I'm I'm, I'm forever thankful anytime somebody takes a half a second to listen to anything I've done. So, like I said, that's, that's every song in my career. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in your song, Again, Love, there's a lyric that struck me. It says, Christ is the one I'm chasing more. Absolutely. Share or expound on, uh, expound on that for a minute. I think, I think we all have to be in that place. This world is ever evolving, and this world day to day will strike emotions if you're not careful that you never knew you had. And if we're not in pursuit of Christ and how he would handle things and how he would govern our lives, I think we all would be at disarray. So every day I'm chasing how he would move. Every day I'm chasing his word. Every day I'm chasing just where he wants me to be and how he wants me to be. I think if we all could do that, I think this world would be a, 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 a way greater pace. You know, people stay in positions to where, oh, this is me, this is what I do, and this is how I do it, and blah, blah, blah. I think if you're chasing Christ, you're, you're chasing evolution. God will uh, evolve your way of thinking. You know what I mean? God will, will, mm -hmm. will give you new ways and new means to deal with hate and just different things that surround us on a daily to where we can digest and know how to deal with love a lot better than what we do. So every day is, 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 is a walk with me. Every Christ is the one I'm chasing more every day. Mm. What's, what's been your greatest lesson learned in this business of music? I know you got a million of them, but uh, then what's that one that, that comes to mind? My greatest lesson is to never put yourself beside of who you are. Never come out of what you know you are. Never compromise on who and what you know you are. I think, uh, I, you know, the most hurtful thing is the time, the times when I was younger when I tried to conform to what people thought or when I tried to conform to what was cool or when I tried to conform to what was working. And, 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 and my biggest lesson is in that is I got smacked in the face, drug out, let down every time. But when I stand on who I'm meant to be, I feel like a winner day in and day out because there's not a day and there's not a result that will come to me and I don't feel 100% about it because I knew I stood in who I was and what I was in making that decision to do what I chose to do. 
Hmm. That's beautiful. What advice would you give to an up-and-coming singer, songwriter, producer, vocal arranger, somebody that wants to be in your position one day? What would you tell them? I would say make sure. <laughs> ah, I would say make, make sure you sure. know what you get into. Absolutely. Make sure, and it is because I think even today, as this business evolves, it is actually it's absolutely weaning out those who are in it for the wrong reasons. This has to be a passion in whatever you do. You have to be passionate about it, and there will be more no's than yeses. So if you're not passionate and you're not driven about what you're doing or what you're trying to get to, those no's will take you off course, and those no's will have you discombobulated in your life. So if you're not driven, if you're not passionate about the effect you need to make and the, the message you need to convey, if you're not passionate about that, and, and willing to do it at any means necessary as far as victory and good, I think you should rethink this. Hmm. Well said, my brother. Any plans on starting a label or developing new talent? Well, listen, as the days go by, you know, I get hit. You know, people have been singing and sending me their rendition of Again, Again Love and and all of that type of stuff, and I'm coming across some incredible, incredible talent. And I think as this business evolves, I feel like it's only right for me to, you know, uh, come up with a platform that those who may not know how to easily execute uh, can come to and be a part of and be felt like, you know, they they, they have a place in this game. So I'm absolutely uh, looking at expanding and, 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 and giving platform to a bunch of young new artists who mean what they're doing, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you, you, you can expect a few things coming from me. For sure. All right. Well, I'm, I'm rooting you on, my brother. Tell us where we can and get I the single. <laughs> Tell us where we can get the single at. The uh, single is on all things digital, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, where every title, wherever you get your music from, the single is up there. Um, you can follow me on all my social medias. I'm at Big Shiz, you know, LaShawn Daniels, all of that type of stuff, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, I think I got a Snapchat and, <laughs> and all of that type of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm all across those platforms. I don't blame you. Well, I appreciate you joining me here, my brother. And when, when I get back in town, I gotta, I'm going to have to come to the studio and just see how it's all done. I got to make that Listen. connection. The, the the doors of the studio is open. Whenever you get ready, you let me know. <laughs> I'll be there, my I'll be there, my I appreciate you, Shiz, and I'll be I'll yes, be in sir. touch real soon. That's why I said you show again, 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 love. Again, 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 love. You show again, 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 love. Again, 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 love. Again, 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 love. Again, 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 podcast where beauty is born skin deep i'm your host cornell germain until next time let your soul be made whole take care thank you for listening to the build on beauty podcast for more information about our host please visit cornellgermain.com